Je suis venue pour vous parler d'éducation. I've come here to speak to you about education to tell you how we can put our schools back into the service of life and we know how much there is a true need for départ, it. Je viens pas du tout du milieu de l'éducation. Originally I don't come at all from an education background. I spent eight years working in the business world and at that time in any case when I started, I looked pretty much like this. C'est vraiment moi. It's really me. I was this young worker, dynamic, wanting to get hers, who is totally launched body and soul in a short-term performance and an exhausting rat race far from meaning, far from values, far from my values. I even worked in businesses where deep, deep down, I did not at all agree with the ethics and the values in place. And I had to journey a long, long path in order to reposition myself. This repositioning came at a moment when, because of the fact that I was losing myself in the rat race, I experienced a small, one could say, burnout, which turned out to be a blessing in disguise. And I feel very grateful for that moment in my life because it allowed me to turn myself towards the very thing that my entire education and life working in the business world had made me flee from myself. It was then that I began to ask myself the right questions, the very questions that I would like every child, every adolescent, every adult on this planet to ask himself. What do I want to do with my life? What is my dream? How can I make it come true? And I hope together tonight we'll be able to dream. It was then that I began at this moment on my path. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet an extraordinary woman named, who I present here, named Edel Gut, who created a course that transforms and it is entitled The Master for the Development of Ethical Leadership. It transforms, it's not always comfortable. You work a lot on yourself, but it creates amazing results. The first thing that I learned during this program is this. It is that we have, all of us, and I mean all, potential. And all of us have a potential for creation that is just infinite, except for the fact that our systems of education, our society, are not all based on this. We are based more so on limitations, lackings, things we can do better. I think that some among you may even have had the experience of being told, not good enough. Maybe some have felt that their children have felt this, you're not good enough, which we must admit is terrible. So I became aware that I had potential, and that was new for me. I had always had the impression that I wasn't enough, that I was never good enough, and that contributed to my constant running through life. Then I became aware of a second thing, which truly shook me up, and it's this. It's the state of the world. It's the state of the world from an environmental perspective. It's the state of the world from a social perspective, including all the inequalities in our so-called developed countries, as well as inequalities between northern and southern countries, as well as an economic model, which I am sure you will agree with me, is one that must be remodeled entirely. So I said to myself, I want to do something about this. I want to contribute. I didn't know how quite yet, but one thing was for sure in my life. I was passionate about children. I have always loved being in contact with children. I have a younger brother who is 17 years younger than me and who contributed a lot in inspiring me in this project that I then launched. I always felt so much joy and always wanted to give a lot of joy to children. I always found that the link was magical with children. And so during this journey of my life and this reorientation, I desired to contribute in my own way for children, for the children of the world, first in France, and then I hope we will be able to multiply and expand to different parts of the world, but contribute to offer them an education that is truly in the service of life, an education that helps them to connect and become aware of their potential, an education that doesn't force them into the mold, that helps them become aware of their unique talents, and yes, that they can, in their own way, contribute to making a better world, that they can change things, and so that later on in their adult lives, they don't set themselves out the way I did, with my head down in short-term performance, but that they really ask themselves, what can I do with my life, and how can I bring my unique talents to the world to change it for the better? And so I set out on a big adventure that took me three and a half years. I'll skip over the highs and lows and difficulties. But in 2007, I opened a school that is called Living School, located in the 19th neighborhood of Paris, that welcomes 82 children today, going from preschool up to the elementary grades. And you can see we have grown, and whose mission is truly, through education, 
and through professional development to contribute to the emergence of fulfilled citizens because that is the basis. Because if I'm well within myself, then I can contribute. And so to be well within oneself, to be well with others, be well in the world, so fulfilled citizens responsible who by their actions contribute to a true evolution of humanity. Voila the objective we've given ourselves at Living School and I want to share with you the principles so as to largely diffuse them because it is so essential today to share and circulate new ideas of education. We need to shake education up to make things move, to transform things. A first principle that we have at the school, and I want to share it with you, is that we have put in the base, truly the base of the pedagogy, life skills, or savoir-être. Savoir-être means the ensemble of our qualities, our flaws. It's who we are, it's our personality. It's the ensemble of our beliefs, of ourselves, of others, of the world. And savoir-être is a bit like, well, let me see what I've hidden here, like a tea bag. You see my tea bag? Well, if I soak it in hot water, it will tint the hot water with its color. And our savoir-être, it is like this. If I am a child, if I lack self-confidence, well, when it comes to my know-how, my savoir-faire, it's going to have an impact. I'm going to have a hard time raising my hand to ask questions when I don't understand. I'm going to have a hard time in a group to assert myself, to express myself. If I am a teacher, and regarding my savoir-être, I have a big need for control, well, guess what? I'm going to put a system of evaluation into place that is based on control. I'm going to have a class climate with the work that is produced with the children that is based on control. And so savoir-être, it is essential. And at Living School, we work on it on all levels. It is the children who work on it. It is the teachers because adults, we need to be exemplary. I can't claim to teach self-confidence to a child if I myself do not have confidence in myself. And then it is also the parents who work on it. There are some parents in the room, and well, it is the parents too who work on their savoir-être. Just some images of what we do. We talk about potential. We call this the biggest treasure. And to celebrate this big treasure, these capacities, these skills that all children have, we put into place what we call success notebooks. And so every week, there you have Tiber and Tiffen, who are coming who will show you how happy they are with their success notebooks. And every week, all the children celebrate their successes. You see, imagine this in every school all over the world. But we don't just talk about only the positive aspects, just about big potential. We also talk about the potential that is a bit more upset, including the emotional reactive state that we all know because we all have moments like this. And the children call this their crocodile. And guess what? At school, we teach them to say stop to their crocodiles. Learning how to say stop to your crocodile, this can take place with taking time to recenter, when you will take some deep breaths, a time when we take time for ourselves. It can also happen by doing as Clea is showing us, by decharging, decharging our anger or our frustration in the punching bag or the anger pillow. And an example I wanted to give you of all the beautiful evolution that this creates within the children when we put savoir-être truly at the heart of our pedagogy. And I really wish that all schools would because we really need it. Here is Com. Combe arrived at our school not even two years ago. He arrived and he lacked confidence in himself. He lacked a lot of confidence in himself. And his mother tells the story that I am sharing with you. She says that one night she needed to make a very urgent phone call and she needed 10 minutes. So she turns to Combe and his little sister, Albertine, and she tells them, kids, I won't be available for 10 minutes. I really need you to take care of yourselves. Okay, so then she is on the phone, and the little sister, Albertine, who is two and a half, starts to cry. And she continues her phone call, a bit bothered, and then she hears the crying soften, and when she finishes her phone call, the crying had stopped. She goes toward the children, and there she comes upon Com in the middle of talking to Albertine, and Com is saying to Albertine, you know, Albertine, you have a big treasure inside of you, you see? You can find the strength to stop crying. Me, before, I felt like I was nobody, and now I feel better. And you see, I like this example because it shows that a child who is touched, 
who begins to feel the richness, the potential that he has inside of him, is able to pass it on and to give it to others, to his sister, but even to other children as well. So it's pretty amazing, especially given that the children, they advance much faster than us adults. Another principle that I really wanted to share with you this evening is to allow for children to really change things in the world. I always found it terribly unfair that the children who have this strong feeling and need for what is right, for what is fair, are the farthest away from our world to act. We tell them, no, 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 you just keep working for another 15 years and then you will see how you can change things. Except that between us, after 15 years, we don't change much because we have entered a mold of formatting. And so that is why I wanted to create at Living School the fact that children can access the world, that they can change things. And voila, one example of what can take place at Living School. This is Elliot. In this photo, he is five years old. And it was when he was five years old that he said to his teacher at the time, Sophie, you know, Sophie, when I am a grown-up, I want to be a policeman for the planet, to bring children, to bring food to all the children of the world who are hungry. And Sophie told him, this is magnificent, Elliot. But would you like to do something today? And he said, really? It's possible? And she said, ah, yes, it's possible. And so he convinced all his friends to do something for the world and for hunger in the world. And then Sophie, at night, went online, immediately went to get some information to see what we could do. Who could we work with? And we ended up working with Action Against Hunger. The children painted plates against hunger, and it was Christmas, and they really put so much of their hearts into it, so much love, because there was meaning. And with the plates that were sold, there were seven children who were truly saved from hunger for one year. When we announced this to the children, and when they had measured what they had created, guess what? They wanted to keep on going. And so since then, there have been so many projects carried by the children that came either from people who met us or from their own ideas. And here are some examples and images of what they have been able to realize, especially two examples. So with Nicola, who you have heard previously, the children helped to plant 722 trees in Senegal and Casamanca. And we made use of that time to also work with the class that was right next to the tree nursery in the village of Teel, a francophone village. And it was huge for the children to want to learn. At that time, our largest class was learning to read and write. And they were so passionate about reading and writing because, you understand, I have to reply to Fatimata that I have zero brothers and zero sisters, that I don't have a chicken as a pet, but I have a hamster or a rabbit. And then we also worked with Claudine André, and the children were able to sponsor Bonobos. We also worked that Jean-Pierre, who is the homeless man of the neighborhood, could spend some nights in a warm hotel during winter. So you see, this is all what children can do when we place our vision on their potential, on their unique talents. And just imagine what it would be if all the schools of the world take hold of this project. Voila, it would be amazing, wouldn't it? Thank you.